So I want you to know, every time you think about being fully satisfied, the theme of the year, grab hold of that, speak it, confess it over your life. You will have what you say. Is that not right? So you press in and believe God to do those things that he's already told you he wants to do. So I want you to think about how many of y'all played sports and were part of a huddle at some point in your life? All right, all right. Do you remember that feeling, being a part of a team, that adrenaline flowing, people high-fiving it, the high energy? You know what? Pushing each other, challenging each other, sharpening each other, cheering each other on. I want you to think about that emotion. And maybe you're not an athlete. Maybe you were a cheerleader like my daughter. But you know what? Maybe, you know, even on your job, you have staff that you have a huddle. You have your own circle. You know what? You think about how you encourage each other, say, we can do this. You know what? Just that whole camaraderie thing. I want you to get a feel for that. Because my goal today, I've already prayed. I am believing God that you will know when you leave these doors that you are not alone. Say, I am not alone. Now look at your name and say, you're not alone. God's got a huddle just for you. God's got a huddle just for you. You know what? When we think about huddles, I want you to think about, you know, there's you born into a huddle, right? Mother, father, sisters, brothers, right? That was a huddle. God had huddles already on his mind. Is that right? And everything you need was in that huddle. But you know, in life, we have family huddles, we have work huddles, we have organizational huddles. But I want you to know that God has a huddle that he has specifically designed for you to carry out your divine purpose. So I want to stir up this emotion because you know what? The Lord uses everything in us. Our imagination, those feelings. Like when I say a huddle, you thought about when you were back in high school, you were in a football huddle, you get all stirred up, especially football players in the house, right? Because we're about to watch the Super Bowl. So we're going to see two huddles, right? We're going to see defensive huddles. We're going to see, you know, offensive huddles. And we're going to see and observe that. But every time you see that, I want you to remember, I am not alone. Because you know my family, no matter how long you've been in church, you know what? When stuff hits the fan, when things, when the rug is pulled from under you, the enemy begins to come and begins to talk. And you start pulling on everything you know. But I believe the Holy Spirit is going to bring this message back to your attention. I am not alone. And I will not fall to his tricks and devices. So right now I want them to show us a huddle. This is the next step. And we got to have it. We got to have it. Who with me? Who with me? Who with me? Can you get stirred up and huddled with that man? Come on. Now, can't, now when y'all see him jumping up and down, declaring and standing on chairs, same guy. So when he stirs you up and says, guys, read your devotionals. You can do this. Is this right? All right. All right, so I want you all to think about. So we talk about huddles. I want to define huddle for the sake of the teaching. It says, in the sport... In a sport, a huddle is an action of a team gathering together, say gathering together, usually in a tight circle, to strategize, to motivate, or celebrate. I read this quick story about this, a history of the football huddle. In 1892, a man named Paul Hubbard, who attended Gallaudet University for the deaf and hard of hearing, was a quarterback for the football team. And so when he, would, when he would get ready to do his plays, he would do sign language. And so if they were playing another team that were also deaf, they could what? Read the signs. So he got this idea and said, hey, guys, circle around. Well, he, yeah, circle around. And so what they would do is they would do their sign language between each other. And do you know from that day, that's our modern-day huddle. All the leagues use the huddle, but that's where it, it came from. Just, isn't that an interesting story? But think about that strategies, encouragement. Do you know the huddle God has for you, their strategies? And do you know in some of these places, those intimate huddles, it is a quiet circle. It is intimate. Everybody need to know what's going on in your life. Especially when you start being transparent and begin to share what's really going on. How many of we all have been there? Every last one of us. I want you to think about, I thrive in circles. I thrive in circles. I thrive in huddles. That word thrive, I looked that up, and it talks about even in challenge, you flourish. In challenge, I can grow. I can thrive. I can get better. I want you to think about that. Thrive. 
I can flourish, I can grow, I can get better, even in challenge, but I need people. I need people. You know, one thing about our God, he has made us to be interdependent. We need each other. We need each other. And we want you to know, you know what? You belong. Here at the Spirit Church, we are so intentional about being relational. You all see it up there up there in the lobby? We are a relational church. So one thing you do, because it's on the wall, because it's our culture, you can say, God, I want to have great relationships. And do you know what? Because you're in this atmosphere and because we're always talking about getting it right with people, do you know that will be a part of your life? But in as much as we are a relational church, you know what? People still think it's just me and Jesus. I've been there. There was a time I said, well, you know what? I don't deal with humans. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. Because when you've gone through some things, you wonder who you can trust, especially if you've been burnt before, where you've opened up and you've shared. You start thinking, I can, it's just me and Jesus. I write my, you know me, I'm writing my journal. I'm confessing and worshiping. But you know what? God won't let us stay there. Because he, he made the system for us to fail alone. So turn to your neighbor and say, I need you, and you need me. Because do you know that every one of you are, are a gift? And so the reason why I say it is because statistically, I have read so much about, there's so much going on with anxiety. And lonely, people are feeling lonely even in the midst of the social media age. Right, so people who seem happy on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, don't buy it. Don't buy it. And that's why you have to, one thing God always reminds me, because you can't go by faces, and I'm one of those that's stirring up and encouraging people, say, don't look at the face. Because the spirit is more real than the natural. You'll never know what's going on with people unless the Holy Spirit shows you. And that's why, family, whenever you come into this place or any house of God, you need to be prayed up and ready to be used. Because some people literally drag themselves to show up here because they don't have any other answers. And they're just hoping and praying this stuff is real. Pastor, you say it's real. You said you had experiences, but you don't haven't had that yet. But because you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can use any one of you. Put your hand on your heart and say, he can use me. God is always looking for labor. So I want to share some of these statistics. So in 2018, in an article in The Economist, it said that nearly half of Americans always or sometimes feel alone. 46% or left out, feel left out. 46% feel like they, they're alone and that they're left out. Hmm. Think about your teenagers. So think about if adults are dealing with this, can you imagine your children? You know, and they, build, they buy into these friends, these likes, and these TikToks, and all these. They really like me. But I am not alone. I want you to think about it. I am not alone. 54% said that they feel like no one knows them very well. No one knows them. Well, our goal here is that you will have opportunity because one thing about the Lord, he will not press past our will. One of the strongest forces in the earth is man's will. You know, God even forced Adam to obey. Is that right? And so when we offer these opportunities for the life groups, there really is life in those groups. There's really life in those circles. And you know what? You get wisdom. You learn about something maybe you didn't know before. And guess what? There are people around there that are going through maybe similar things as you, but sometimes it's a matter of getting in the spot. Just, you know, okay, they're offering. I don't know anything about these things. Let me try it out. But if you feel that nudging, I'm talking about someone's invited you about doing it, that's a nudging. And when you follow the nudging of the Holy Spirit, he can give you what you desire because he knows what we talk to him about in private. He knows the stuff we're dealing with that nobody knows about but the family. So they said, so in 2015, researchers at UCLA found that social isolation, isolation can trigger cellular changes that result in predisposing people to heart disease, stroke, cancer, and Alzheimer's. Loneliness, if not dealt with, can lead to psychiatric disorders like depression, anxiety, and schizophrenia. Aren't we seeing that in our day? But one thing here at the Spirit Church, wherever you are on the spectrum, do you know what? We have people that we refer you out to. 
You, whatever needs you have, you know what, you share with our prayer partners, guess what, we have resources for you. If any of you are feeling lonely and feeling like, you know, I just can't get, I can't get past this, you know what, we have people that will encourage you and give you the resources that you need so you can get through because you are not, oh, you got it, you got it. So that's my goal. You're going to get that. But you know what? We have to choose to do what the Lord is leading us to do. So even here, even if you're thinking about, you know, being a part of a life group, you know, if you want to teach one, there's opportunity to do that. Anything that's in you, we want to stir that thing up because guess what? You call for a purpose. Let's put up John 17, verse 4. I want you to see this in the message version. I love this scripture because I want you to know that you have a purpose. Look at this. This is Jesus speaking. Jesus said these things. Then raising his eyes in prayer, he said, Father, it's time. Display the bright splendor of your son so the son in turn may show your bright splendor. 14. John 17, verse 14. Verse 4. 17, verse 4. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Because I like this scripture. Pay attention to this. And this is a real eternal life that they know you, that one and only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent, I glorified you on earth. This is it. I glor- This is Jesus. Said, I glorified you on earth by completing down to the what? Last detail, what you assigned me to do. This is Jesus talking to his father. He says, now glorify me in your splendor because I've finished the work. I've completed it. Do you know what? You have an assignment on your life. I like the way uh, Terry Savelle Foy says it. She says, there's a clipboard in heaven. Picture the big, pic, the big clipboard. There's a clipboard in heaven with your name on it. And there's some things that you are called to do. You have a divine assignment. But to carry out the divine assignment, you're going to need help. You're not going to be able to do this on your own. So the thing is, God has set this thing up to where we can't carry it out by ourselves. There are people around your life that are called specifically to you. And guess what? In your huddle, in your divine huddle, they may not even know each other, but they play a specific role. Just like pastor in their huddle, and you'll see today in the games, each one of those guys plays a different position. But the goal is for them to what? Have victory, to win. Is that right? So they're very specific people who are called to be a part of your life. But you got to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. He's going to be telling you things. that you may have to step up and talk to people. You may have to join a huddle so you can be in the atmosphere. So God can nudge somebody and say, go talk to that young lady or that young man. Go encourage him. And they'll identify, hmm, maybe, Lord, is he a part of my huddle? Think about that. The gifts are around you in these specific places, in these specific huddles. Pay attention. There are people that are assigned specifically to your huddle. Pastor, and I challenge our children too. There's a huddle for your life. And some of these people come and go in your huddle. Some people come for a season. But they're critical for your success in that season. But you cannot do it alone. So we thrive. I want you to hear that word thrive. So I've got an acronym. Okay, so my first one's together. We cannot do this alone. Our, you know, think about it. Jesus had a huddle. He had 12. Who had, there were gifts, and they can serve, right? Even John the Baptist had a huddle. So how do we feel like we can do it without humans? Or it's a relationship with just me and God, especially when you hurt, because we can use that real quick, right? But no, that's not the Lord's will. So I want you to think about that. So when you recognize the power and the huddle, you will think about when you're lonely, when you're going through, when things have happened, you've been disappointed, once again frustrated, I want you to think thrive, life. Oh, I got to connect. In every, and it's not going to feel comfortable. You're going to feel like, you know what, I don't know these people. I'm just joining these, this church. They don't hardly speak to me. If I say the enemy, the enemy is on it. Because guess what, the enemy has strategies. He has strategies. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 14. God set up the system for us to fail without other people. And with our, if we're going to have a vertical relationship with God, we've got to have horizontal. There's no getting out of it. So get, look at this. Just as a body, the one has many parts. Many parts. But all its many parts form what? One body. So it is with Christ. We're a part of a body. And extends past the spirit church. It's in the kingdom of God. It's across the globe. So you know what that means in the body of Christ? Whatever you need, God can shoulder tap and say, go speak to her. 
or sit you, Larry, and Pastor has all these crazy stories. Larry, sit you in the seat on the plane when you're trying to doze off and then you wake up just to go to the bathroom, come back, somebody starts a, a conversation with you and they're dealing with the same thing you're dealing with. That means the Holy Spirit can get a hold to anybody's heart to connect to your specific huddle. So we have to do this together. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. I want y'all to get these scriptures. Y'all can see it in the, in the word. Because whenever you're feeling lonely, feeling like, I ain't going to church today. Hold up. Something's happening. The spirit is more real than the natural. You think natural. I'm just tired. You know, it's been a long day, a long week. I'm not going to church. Mm-hmm. The more you stay home, it gets more and more comfortable because the enemy is busy. The enemy is busy. Look at this. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. That means, you know, if one falls, guess what? Another one can pick them up. When one falls, when you're down and out, there's somebody that can lift you up. That's what I love about the body of Christ. You come to church, and sometimes, you know what? We're not exempt. Pastor and I are not exempt. There are times I said, I'm just going to, I'm going to show up. Lord, you got somebody that's going to speak to me. You got some for me. I come here. I come here expecting. I come here expecting God to use the gifts in the house. I have such respect for the gifts. He will use anybody. And if I'm going through that, if any of us need that, you need that too. So I want to show this picture because I want you to see what the enemy is up to. You all know the scripture? What do you see? So it's kind of blown up. But you see the, the lion is going after the zebra because the zebra has separated itself from the flock. So now it's made him vulnerable to attack. Doesn't the enemy come like a what? Roaring lion, seeking whom he may what? Well, who can he devour? The vulnerable? The lonely, like Pastor says, like the charcoal, the barbecue, that charcoal goes off to the side. It's cold. It's gray. It's not well lit. It's not, it doesn't have the fire to fight, to stir. That's a, not a fighting position. Is that right? So whenever you feel alone, you got to press because the enemy is up to something. The spirit is more real than the natural. Don't sleep on these things. You may think it's my emotions. I'm feeling this. Forget the feelings. Submit to your spirit, man, because the Holy Spirit be like, get up. Somebody call you, and you literally have to tell them, I'm not going today. You literally have to submit your will to disobey. But the Lord will give you a way out. The Holy Spirit will give you a way out and say, get up, get dressed. You can make it. So I want you to see that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he is out for blood. He's trying to take everything out of you because guess what? You represent people. If he can get you, he's got everybody else that you're called to. All right? So I want you to see, so that's together. I want to look at hope. There's hope in our huddles. There's hope in huddles. There's hope in connection. The word even tells us where two or three are gathered, what? There he is, what? In the midst. Not by yourself. Yes, we have our own devotional time with God. We spend time with God. But guess what? We have to connect with other people. Hebrews 10, 25. I want you all to see this so you know why we go to church. <laughs> It says, look, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. You see that? You don't want to be in this habit because that's when the enemy gets you discouraged. One, thing's happen one thing happens after another. And before you know it, you know what? You've given up. You walked away from God. But now, nope, we're called to raise, but what? A wise and understanding people. Now you're going to understand what's going on. So guess what? You want to stay connected to the body. You want to stay connected to people. And some people you're going to have to reach out to. And I'm telling you, I've been in places. I remember when my mom passed, uh, 2017, I was just in a funk. When I came back from Louisiana, I'm like, Lord, hmm, my mom's gone. You know when mama or big mama leaves, things are different, isn't it? Because mama's to make the nest. She's the one that checks on. She's hey, baby, how you doing? And those kinds of things. And so I start missing that voice. I'm thinking, man, I'm alone. And we out here in St. Louis. Yes, Lord, I love your people. I always have to say, I love your people, Lord. Thank you for the honor and privilege to serve in your kingdom. I got to get my stuff together. So I say that. And then it's like, you know what? And just when I get in my pity party, no, I'm not going to do a life group. No, I'm just going to chill out. Just, you know, go do my job, do what I need to do. And he said, nope. In my spirit, you know that in your heart? It says, nope, you're doing a life group, and you're going to do one every season except summer. I'm like, oh, yeah. And you know what he did even in the midst of that? Because remember, when your heart, when you're before the Lord, he knows where you are. He began to bring to my remembrance. You know what, Tracy? You're missing your family, right? What about your first cousins? 
Then he goes, these first cousins, girl, like maybe 10 of them. We grew up really close. My twin sister and I grew up really close to our first cousins. A whole bunch of girls, and many of them are divorced, went through all kinds of stuff, but we haven't been connecting. So the Lord put on my heart, you know, what about your first cousin? Reach out. Reach out. Next thing you know, I'm planning the girls' trip for the first cousins. What I'm saying is, again, God will use you for other people, too. While you getting your stuff together, he's trying to help you. But while he's helping you, he's helping other people. And it was so refreshing. So we're going to have our third year coming up. But it was so refreshing. Cousins that I grew up with that we really hadn't talked because people want to put on the front and act like they got it together. The fakery. But the Lord wants to penetrate the heart. On the, in, on the inside, right? He wants to get to the inside. But in that opportunity of me obeying God, not only that, he didn't stop there. This is our God. Okay, Tracy, remember all the ladies you, that you became a woman with, when, the ladies in Phoenix when you had the Bible study with the players' wives? What about them? They're spread out all over the country. You haven't connected with them. The next thing you heard, you heard somebody, some people divorced, people going through depression, being hospitalized. Have you checked on your friends? So I reached out to the friend, the huddle. Pressing towards huddles that I had in the past. Huddles I had in the past. The Lord puts them on my heart in my time of, you know, feeling depressed, the loneliness creeping up on me. And the next thing you know, I'm connected with them. We're going on our fourth year of our girls' trip. And I needed it. I needed it. But guess what? They needed it too. God is about other people. When this is about you and you feeling your feelings, you got to press to get here. You got to press to get to huddles because it's about other people. You are a laborer. God is going to, he says the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. He needs humans. The Lord has done all he's going to do. He needs you in position. He needs you stirred up and on fire like the hot charcoal. So you're going to have to press past the loneliness because what? It's not about you. It's not about me. Is that right? Do y'all get that? Can we get some hope in the house? Hope. Now I want to get to this reach out. Reach is the next one. So I want to encourage you all. We got some seasoned saints in the house. You're filled with the word, filled with wisdom and direction. Do you know what? Some of our young people, our millennials, you know what? They need encouragement. The world has changed. I'm only 50. The world, <laughs> the world has really changed, has it not? And our young people, even young couples, need support. They need encouragement. So I'm encouraging you. You know what? Pray and say, Lord, how can I be used? Put up the Titus scripture for me. How can I be used to encourage this next generation? They need you. And maybe you have it together. You've got your huddle. You, you've reached, you're reaching your, getting your stuff done on your, on your clipboard. But there are other people that need encouragement. They need to know I can do this. I can stay married. I can stay married and be happily married. Yes, and I don't have to be creeping. I don't have to be chasing his phone down to see who he's talking to. And, you know, they need this. But you know what? Some of us have the answer. So I want you to see what is God calling me to do to the next generation. It's not about me. He wants to do something to other people. So it says, then they, ur they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, to be subject to their husband, to be submissive, to, to be one. And then Pastor broke that down to be one, so that no one will malign the word of God. The next one, look at this. Hmm? Not just the young women, similarly encourage the young men to be self-controlled. In everything, set them an example by doing what is good in your teaching. Show integrity and seriousness. You know, we have all these life groups. And you know what? It's a great opportunity to reach generations that maybe you don't even know. Maybe you're trying to figure out how I can connect with other people. Use your gift. See, say, Lord, what should I teach? What, what, what group can I facilitate that I can meet the needs of people who are going through? We need some men because our men, oh, my goodness, our men are looking for answers. So many women are stirred up and ready to go, but our men, come on, anybody hearing me? Our men, they be stirred up to be out front. They need courage. You know what? And so that's what we want to do. That's what we want to be mindful of that. And they need to be, when you see them doing something good, you see a man raising his kids, say something to them. Say something to them. You know what? If the word tells us, you know what? Don't, don't withhold your words to those to whom it's due. Don't withhold honor to those to whom it's due. When you see people, young people doing great things, 
Say something. You don't know what that'll do for them. Do y'all get that? So we got to encourage one another, encourage, reach back. So once, once we reach, when we reach back, guess what? God sees with our hearts. When we're looking for our huddle, trying to get our stuff situated, our purpose, our business, those things that concern us, but we start sowing into other people. One thing about Pastor Aeneas, man, he always chases down young people, and he's always been that kind of person that even in Arizona, we had, he, had, he literally had a life group in the house with young men, men in the community, men on his team. You have opportunity. Just ask God, how do I set this up? I know the Holy Spirit is going to be nudging some folks. Pay attention to that. So my next one is inspire. You know what? We're all inspired about, there are people we see doing things in excellence. Is that right? When you see people doing something in excellence, it stirs you up. You know what? Sometimes you're going to have to step towards them and say, you know what? How are you doing that? What's the key to that? Especially in your professions, those things, those business ideas, the things that God has put in your heart to do, find successful, credible others. Like pastors always say, chase them down. It's going to be awkward. It's going to be weird. You're going to feel out of place, but you're going to be obeying and you're going to be getting some wisdom, and you, that inspiration is going to turn into a fire inside of you that you will carry it out. Pastor and I do this all the time. We reach out to other people. We've always done it. Even when he played in the NFL, we had couples that we were literally spend months with. Gil Bird, y'all hear him talk about Gil Bird. He played for the, 40, the uh, Chargers. And one day after a game, he asked him, he said, Mr. Bird, can I study film with you? Next thing you know, he's flying to San Diego, spending time in the film room with Gil. And he says, Tracy, you should meet his wife. You should see their children. And, she's, and next thing you know, I'm flying. I'm hopping the plane, coming to San Diego. We didn't have children, so we are spending so much time with them for years just watching them. My husband played 14 years in the NFL, and I'm telling you, being around that couple made it so easy. We enjoyed it. We loved it. You know how you hear about the, all the stuff that goes on? Mm-mm because God was setting us up in our huddle because we were connecting to other people who had our answers, even if we didn't know the answers we were going to need. So pay attention to those things. You have to step out to those who inspire you, something about people that may inspire you. Lean in and say, you know what, let me go talk to them. We challenge our teens to do this all the time. So adults, if there are people inspiring you in your area that you know that you're responsible for in that clipboard, move towards them. Step out. Okay? Inspiration. And I just want you to know. So after inspiration, my next one is victory. Ooh. Victory and character building. Because it's just like that porcupine. Whenever you get close to humans, <laughs> when you get close to people, stuff happens, right? Offenses may come. It's a sure, it will come. Sure enough come. But one thing I want you to recognize about offense, I have found it to be true. God may be in it. And the thing you think is about them, it's all about you. Issues, remember we say issues, issue. You know what, and I had to learn this one. So Victory, one time when you're around people, something goes off, something, God exposes you. I'm going to tell a real quick story by myself. Some of you may have heard the story, but this changed my life. So when we were in Arizona, I think I was maybe four years into the marriage, we had some, um, some friends. One of my husband's teammates was about to get married. So he married this young lady, and when he brought her to Phoenix, he brought her right to our house because he figured I could be a good mentor, right? And she was sweet as pie, loved her. And so I had this women's Bible study. And so we had women coming on Saturdays and having a great time. And over months, you know, we're getting to know each other. Next thing you know, she's inviting people to her house to have teas. So something starts to happen on the inside of Tracy. The only God knew that Tracy needed to be delivered to get to her spot. Right? Envy, jealousy, comparison. And I'm thinking, what is she trying to do? So, of course, I go to Pastor Aeneas. Say, and I'm telling them, like, she's causing division. Mm-hmm. Causing strife. You know how we use those terms? They causing division, causing strife. They're up to some motive, wrong motives. And my husband, with all wisdom, that's why you, you know, get under. So I used to get on, get under. I'm learning to stay under, staying under. <laughs> because it's true. It's God's order. I'm not playing games. It's God's order. So what did Pastor say to me? And I'm just going on and on. He said, Tracy, it's you. Get to your prayer closet. So listen to this real quick. Go to my prayer closet. 
And I'm like, Lord, what's going on? Why do I feel this way? So she's coming to my study. Hey, Tracy, everything's great. Nobody knows. And how it, isn't it how it is when we're dealing with stuff? We can play the game, and I'm good at it. But feeling horrible, icky on the inside. So, I have, so you know, we would do these luncheons after maybe six weeks of the, the Bible study. And so at the end of the, at the luncheons, I get all these magazines, Martha Stewart, I'm studying all the flower arrangements. I'm paying people to do the flower arrangements, paying people to serve. So I go to my friend's, um, this young lady, go to her house. It's literally like Martha Stewart. She is Martha Stewart incarnate. Literally, she's Martha Stewart. She's doing all the flower arrangements with her own hands. She's serving, and it's beautiful and elegant. And Tracy's feeling weird. God is exposing me. So what do I do? I go to the bathroom. Lord, what's going on? Why do I feel so weird, you know, weird and icky and sticky and green like you really can see green? And so what, did, what happened? So the Lord started dealing with me. So there was a conference that was coming up, Marilyn Hickey, Women in Ministry. And I just felt compelled, like that nudging, like you got to go, you got to go. So I'm thinking, okay, for some reason I got to go. If I don't go, I'm going to miss out. So I re- started to register for this conference. And so as I'm registering for the conference, the Lord said, you can't go by yourself, see. So he says, you know, so as I'm registering, next thing you know, her face pops up in my eyes. <laughs> Lord, what? If I always feel weird already around her, you want me to spend some time with like three days away? I'm going to spend time with her. I said, Lord, how am I going to get through? So I obey, and we go, and we have a really good time. But on that trip, I'm thinking the whole time we're in these workshops and we're staying in service because I'm good at that. Um, so in this one workshop we went to, it's about financing your ministry. I'm thinking I just have a Bible study. You know, I don't know, Lord, why, why am I here? Still trying to figure out why did he send us here? And so while I'm in this workshop, you know how they give you a binder of some of the other things that are going on in the conference. So I just are flipping through. And I came across this set of gifts. You see it in, you see it in 301. The Romans 12 gifts. And they started talking about the gifts, the strengths and weaknesses of each of the gifts. And I'm just zoning out, looking through these gifts. And then I come upon a gift, exhorter, cheerleader, strengths and weaknesses. And I'm thinking, that's me. Literally an explosion on the inside of me like, that's me, Tracy, that's you. And I start flipping. I start looking at the other gifts. And I look at server, gifted with their hands, loves hospitality. And I've almost been wanting to cry. I couldn't wait to get out of the class so I could show it to my friend. God told me who I was through my gift. And I'm telling you, as soon as that class was over, I shared it with her, and she's almost in tears herself. She's like, I didn't know I was a servant gift. And then I was on a mission. <laughs> After that, when I got back to Arizona, I'm trying to make everybody know their gifts. I'm asking them questions to find out who they are. But from that moment, I was delivered from comparison, envy, jealousy. And even though the enemy tries to creep up, because he will do that, tries to creep up, it's like, nope. And I start encouraging and building up even more because that's who I am. But do you see how those things that irk you about people, pay attention. And that young lady and I are so super close. Our names are spelled exactly the same. And she knows every time I tell this story, she knows that, you know what, I love her. I tell her all the time, Trace, I told our story today because God delivered me. And he showed me something that a lot of times when I'm going through relationship issues, he's trying to grow me up. And that's what the victory does. When you're in huddles, you don't get that when you're by yourself, just coming in and leaving out. You don't get to grow up that way. You only grow up around other human beings. You have to purposely put yourself in those atmospheres. Do you understand that? You have to do that. Because if you want to grow, because there's people waiting for you to get in your God spot. And it only comes through us walking it out with the Holy Spirit. Walking it out with the Lord. And he knows you. He knows you. And he has great plans for your relationships. And so don't sleep on those things. But there's things going on at work. It's you. He wants to do something in you. So finally, it's energize. The word energize. You know what? We all need to be stirred up. We all need to be encouraged and put the fight, the, you know, the fire under us. All of us need to be lit up, need to know that God still works in us. He still wants to do something incredible in us. You know, and some people just need a little lift. Some people just need a, a call, a, a chat, a stirring. But pay attention to those people around your life that build you up. Pay attention to those people that challenge you. And even in your family, there are certain people that tell you the absolute truth about you. And sometimes we may not want to receive it. But do know that could be the key. That could be a person that's supposed to be part of your huddle that helps you stretch, helps you grow, helps you become better 
built in character because sometimes your character, if your character can't sustain you, God can't trust you with those positions. So you have to be willing to take people at their word, especially if you know they, they're out for your best interest. All right? So I just want you to know we thrive in huddles. Everybody say we thrive in huddles. So I just want you all to just, re, just to recap a little bit. Everything we need to thrive in is around us. Our huddles cause us to thrive. So think about it. We are better together. When we connect in huddles, we have hope. We have to reach back and pull other people up. If we are inspired, we're supposed to get around those people because they'll help elevate us, help us level up. And you know what? We have victory when we're around other people because God grows us up and exposes those things that we need to change. And guess what? And then when we're around other people, we just get energized. Pastor says it all the time. More is caught than taught. Just being in the room, just being in the circle, being around the people, being in the church. God sets the atmosphere. He begins to use us, all those who are available. Did you all receive that today? So I just want y'all to repeat. We thrive in, thank you, you got it. And you are not, so you won't listen to the, the enemy's message. You will not listen to the lies of the enemy. So every, every eye closed, let's go before the Father.